I see a video of this guy. He claimed to be a, a photorealistic uh, painter for NASA, painting stuff for NASA. And he had a whole comic routine out there, you know, talking, is it, is it real or is it a painting? You know, now I'm an artist myself, and if I really applied myself, I can get really close to photorealism. Uh, it's been a long time since I've done that, but, uh, you know, he, he does that, and he was talking about, well, I started thinking about what he was saying, and check this out. All these images up here, none of these are, these are all paintings. Th those are not real sculptures on the, on the bottom there. Those are paintings a friend of mine did. Paintings of sculptures. And the pictures up above, those aren't real glasses of wine. Somebody painted that. Now, putting it in perspective, which do you think is harder to paint? <laughs> so I'm listening to Matt Boyle, and I'm going, well, he's got a reasonable case there. You know, and, and then I showed you, you know, all the other stuff that I went into. So, listen to this. I'm a visual visualization scientist. I basically try to come up with ways of explaining complex science stories through the visuals and developing artwork and illustrations that actually can help explain the science story to people. For decades, popular culture and shows like Star Trek inspired a generation of scientists by envisioning what space might look like. But wait, what does space actually look like? Heart nebulas, celestial collisions, a bird's eye view of the Milky Way, astronomers are charting the outer reaches of the cosmos and bringing back jaw-dropping images from telescopes like Hubble and its infrared cousin Spitzer. If you look down at the bottom of that Milky Way image, you'll see these two words, artist concept. This sweeping image of the Orion Nebula actually looks like this. And the TRAPPIST-1 star system, the latest discovery of seven potentially habitable exoplanets that made national headlines, it's really only a box of gray and white pixels. You see, space art is part of NASA, and it has been since before we went to the moon. <laughs> Just openly admitting it. The problem is we've all been fooled by space art. Including that the most famous picture we all have seen in our textbooks. This was, I had that as wallpaper, okay? One whole wall in my bedroom was, was the surface of the moon with the earth behind it. That itself was a composite image because there's no way the earth looked like that from the moon on the surface of the moon. So it was a composite image that even on my wall, you know? And then of course, we've seen this before where they, they year after year they put out blue marbles and they're all looking different. Now you can write off the color issue by filters. Okay, because they'll say, well, the different satellites that took these pictures had different filters, and that's why the color is different. Sure, but that's not going to increase the continent size of the United States and, you know, other things like that, right? Something's seriously wrong here. What's the deal? If we're out there doing these things, why can't we just take a Polaroid shot without having it to be doctored in any way? You know, so it starts getting you questioning. And then you start looking at all the other ridiculous, pardon my language, crap that NASA's always putting out. You know, I start looking into various different things, other stupid things that we believe. First of all, you see that they had a, a, a very early relationship with Walt Disney. Now, there's all kinds of things we can talk about Disney <laughs> and Freemasonry and pedophilia and all kinds of other sick things uh, there. But they had a relationship right there because that was their propaganda machine. And you may have seen some of the videos out there how there's all kinds of phallic symbols and other sexual things that the artists have embedded in all kinds of the, the family-friendly cartoons that we watched, you know, from Walt Disney. Well, isn't it interesting that they put some of the same stuff even in pictures of the Earth where the clouds are magically spelling sex, right? And found this out also. This character right here, Pluto, was created by Walt Disney in 1930, coincidentally the same year we discovered the planet Pluto, and then decades later we finally send the probe out there, and what do you know? There's an image of Pluto on Pluto! <laughs> Imagine the coincidence! They're laughing at us! Seriously? There's a spot on Pluto that just so happens to look like Pluto? Wow! Okay, and right before that, news articles came out. I can't even believe that people believe this. They were trying to capture the shadow of Pluto going across the Earth as a distant star shone light on the planet Pluto. And it, all those, Pluto something like 5 billion miles away. 
And they were saying that a, the light from a distant star was going to illuminate Pluto from behind and cast a shadow for a few seconds on the Earth, and they were going to go measure it. Think about that for a little bit. Really? And that was just right before. It says, the occultation happened at a unique time, just two weeks before NASA's New Horizons mission will make its nearest approach to Pluto on 14 July 2015. You're seeing the shadow of Pluto. What about Jupiter and Saturn? Much bigger. We should have shadows all over the place. We should be dodging shadows of planets with all those stars shining on them. Give me a break. They're telling us that there's all of these different Earth-like planets out there, right? How many of you guys have been following the news on that? You know, they keep saying, that video I just showed you a minute ago, really all they were looking at is, is a couple of, you know, grace blocks. What's even worse, though, is how far away these things are. How far away these things, and how far away they say that they're looking, right? Do you know how far a light year is? One light year is approximately six trillion miles. They're telling us we're looking across thousands of light years. 3,000, that's 3,000 times six trillion. Oh, it gets worse than that. They said that they saw a black freaking hole at 55 million light years away. <laughs> 55 million times 6 trillion. You got a telescope that can see that far? <laughs> Zoom in on the moon right now and read me the serial number on the bumper of the buggy. <laughs> right now. Or shut up. It's outrageous. I mean, it's like every, every month they're trying to see how much further they can push the envelope. How stupid and gullible are we? But that's the evidence we are all using for what we used to believe or what some of you may even still believe to be true about our cosmos. We listen to these people. And if you're here from a creation ministry, how dare you? I'm calling you out. You know, I applaud you for what you did with evolution, biological evolution. And I'm going to hit hard on this tomorrow, why creationists should just stay away from the whole debate. They shouldn't even open their mouth. If you claim to be a Bible-believing Christian, and you are using these people as your source for what you believe about the world and this place and the cosmos, there's a problem there. I had to finally just admit that, because I loved NASA. I was a NASA fanboy, like I told you before. Oh, but yeah, we're, uh, we're going to Mars. Oh, and by the way, Mars just so happens to look exactly like some of the places here on Earth. <laughs> Imagine the coincidence. It's incredible. It's a little more red. Oh, and by the way, they got rodents up there, too. <laughs> you know, they, wow. Imagine the coincidence. How cool is that? There's life on Mars. Squirrels. No, they're up in Devon Island. You can go look this up on Google Earth for yourself. They openly admit that they test the, the Mars rovers and stuff at Devon Island, which is up in northern Canada, sort of off the northwest coast of Greenland. Okay, we're dealing with a little doom buggy. By, by the way, do you actually believe we have the ability to remote control a doom buggy on Mars? I don't even have cell phone reception in here. I don't. Oh, but we're controlling a doom buggy on Mars. Really? Oh, why do we have to go to Devon Island to test? It's just a little doom buggy going around dirt and rocks. We've got plenty of dirt and rocks right here. Why do we got to go to Devon Island? Oh, because it's cold. You could put it in an ice box and still simulate cold if you want to see if it can handle the cold. No, they're going to Devon Island because nobody else is up there, and it just so happens to look like what we think Mars looks like. Unbelievable. Oh, but Elon Musk. First of all, how many of you have ever heard the name Elon before you heard of Elon Musk? Anybody? A college by the name of Elon. Interesting. I'd never heard the name Elon before I heard of Elon Musk. How interesting, though, that Werner von Braun, Captain Nazi NASA guy himself, right, wrote a fiction novel, I think it was in the late 1950s, 
about a colony on Mars. It just so happened to be led by a guy named Elon. Oh, imagine the coincidence. Oh, but now we've got a Tesla on the way. Did you hear about that? He shot up a car, supposedly. And he himself said, you know, it's got to be real because it looks so fake. What was going through your mind? How, how amazed were you to see your roadster up there with Starman uh, just cruising along with the Blue Planet? And how long will we be getting live views, do you think, from the car? Well, I think it looks so ridiculous and impossible. Um, and you can tell it's real because it looks so fake, honestly. <laughs> because it did look fake. A whole lot of people, <laughs> look, they got a Tesla flying around the Earth. They just made a pass around the sun, from what I heard. Now it's on the way to Mars, I guess. Okay, but now here's something else that's really interesting. Look at this car. Look at the tires. Look at the plastic and the leather and other things. Listen to this. But, we you know, we didn't really test any of those materials for, you know, is it space hardened or whatever, you know. So... It just has the same seats that a, like a normal car has. It's just literally a normal car in space, which I kind of like the absurdity of that. Yeah, it is quite absurd. Now, I went to the Contact in the Desert conference earlier this year, and this individual here, David Adair, uh, claims to be a materials specialist working for NASA, allegedly testing various materials uh, before they put it on objects that are supposed to be sent out into space. All right, now listen to what he has to say about testing these materials. In the material sciences, um, in that environment, it's not friendly out there, y'all. It's, it's 225, 250 degrees below zero on the shadow side, 250 above on the sun side. So right through the meridian line, you've you got a 500 degree difference. It's a total vacuum. There's ultraviolet rays, gamma rays, uh, infrared, all unfiltered by the atmosphere. It just burns things up when they hit it. Some of our materials just absolutely disintegrated. They were gone. We just had a blank where we put the piece of material. Okay, so if this guy's testimony is true, then he just completely de debunked this. I mean, look at the rubber on the tires. You know, the, the tires aren't exploding, the rubber's not disintegrating, any plastic on there is not, you know, frying, and it's spinning. So it's going 500 degree temperature range from 250 plus to negative 250 plus as it's in direct sunlight and then, you know, spinning out of direct sunlight. And yet the glass is fine, the plastic's fine, the rubber's fine, the leather's fine, everything's okay. It's just a regular car that Elon Musk himself said basically just pulled right off the lot and supposedly shot it up into space. So, yeah, I agree with Elon. It does look fake, and the whole thing is completely absurd, and I think anybody who believes this is actually real probably needs to have their head examined. We'll believe anything nowadays. Oh, by the way, they found the Star Trek symbol on Mars, too. Did you know that? Oh, this is real. CNN right there. A couple months ago, June 13th, we found the Star Trek symbol. Starfleet's been there already. <laughs> wow. Not only did they find one, they just found a whole bunch of them. Look at this, a whole fleet of Star, Star Trek symbols. Just so happened to be on Mars. You know what? They're punking you. They're laughing at you, just as they were laughing at me just a few years ago when I bought all this garbage. <laughs>